greetings to Praveen and to Satish. Uh, it's a great morning today. And we have our distinguished speaker, Praveen Moon, today. Uh, some audit brings this series, webinar series, which is recorded videos, which will be of use to the internet fraternity. And uh, yet again, today, we have got this 17th episode where we have got uh, such a distinguished speaker with us. Yeah, this idea of having this chief auditor series is to encourage youngsters, experienced people as well. And I, in fact, uh, Dibji and I have learned so much in these uh, 16 sessions. And definitely we learned something today as well. Something different, something new, something which is being done very, very well uh, by the uh, respected uh, chief auditors. We are also planning to bring in academicians. We are planning to bring in all stakeholders of internal audit as we move ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll formally introduce pra Praveen uh, to all of us. Uh, he is currently the global internal audit function. He heads the global internal function at Apollo Tires Group, responsible for multiple operating units. So there are three listed companies across different business verticals, tires, healthcare, education. He's also responsible for implementing the data privacy and protection program across Apollo's, you know, Euro 500 million turnover business in Europe, pursuant to GDPR. Uh, Apollo Tires business company is $2.5 billion, you know, is responsible for internet globally, including the manufacturing plants in India, Hungary, and Netherlands, sales and distribution across 20 countries. And as a member of the company's risk management steering committee is responsible for assisting the business in identifying, mitigating, and reporting business risk. He's also responsible for assurance in the group's healthcare business and not-for-profit, you know, education business. Uh, there are five educational institutions there. And since joining Apollo Tires in 2012, he's transformed the function, you know, from a conventional, traditional type to a more modern with, you know, technology, analytics, and result-oriented function. He believes in internal audit, you know, should find the right balance between a value protection and value enhancement. So, you know, we have, we have heard that most uh, great auditors talk about, you know, value protection and value enhancement. So it's assurance and consulting, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And for the privacy program, he's leading end-to-end -end implementation from building capabilities, ensuring project governance, creating and implementing policies and processes, and carrying out data privacy impact assessments across the entire data management lifecycle. Uh, he leads the team of 15 plus high-performing individuals across Gurgaon and Amsterdam for both risk and privacy functions. Uh, prior to joining uh, Apollo Tires, he was with Pricewaterhouse Coopers in the risk advisory services, uh, put in 11 years there, successfully managed large complex international projects globally. Uh, I'm not naming the verticals, it's who's who, you know, mostly so many sectors he's worked across. And he's also uh, seconded to PwC to US uh, wow. for a period of five months, he was a group in charge of 60 plus individuals and led team up to 30 individuals. Uh, he has experience in all domains of governance. You know, uh, again, I'm not getting into it. It is like, you know, uh, he's going to talk about the function. So it is IFC, SOX, assurance, consulting, uh, fraud investigations, you know, fraud prevention. Uh, so across GRC, the entire GRC uh, cycle, is, you know, end to end, uh, he's got cost reduction, IT audits, and he is a chartered accountant, article ship in Delhi, his commerce graduation in Delhi, and he's recently completed senior management program from Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Uh, apart from internal audit, I think Peter Drucker said that apart from internal audit, you should also double into something else so that you are really, uh, you know, you are really up there. So he is a passionate photographer, a cricket oh. fanatic, uh, a movie buff. A keen runner, uh, wow. married to Minal, a child accountant, and has a 15-year-old son. So, you know, that's Praveen Moon for you. Uh, Praveen, all yours. Thank you so much, Deepji. Thank you. Thank you, Shatishji. Uh, I feel uh, honored to be, to be here giving this small talk. Uh, and thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for a very nice introduction. I don't think so. I've been ever been introduced so nicely as you have done. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Uh, really humbled. And I look forward to, to doing this talk. And I must say before I start this presentation is that this talk is going to be only, my, my presentation is going to be only 20, 25 minutes and maybe another 20 minutes or so, 45 minutes. 
but the journey of making this presentation was quite enriching you know i i, I could do a lot of reflections i involved my team and they could also contribute so so apart from doing audit i think it was a good reflection exercise will it's going to help us how moving forward so that's that's certainly the advantage that i take uh, from from this and also i'm would be glad to hear from satish and you as to you know what 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 is the feedback on what i'm going to present so i'm going to start my presentation if you allow me <clears throat> i'm going to share my screen please okay okay so i've so i've just been told that there has been 16 uh, other uh, caes who have presented it before so I, I, and I was uh, aware of this fact, so I was I was trying to keep it little different. Uh, you know, I'll not talk about usual stuff that uh, which, which is there in 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 internal audits. I'm not going to talk about methodology or how we do an audit planning or how we do an annual audit planning. You know, I think uh, those things are all being standardized over a period of time. And I will share more more what are the best practices in that domain. Okay, so that's how I'm going to talk about it, and I've structured my presentation into three parts. So, firstly, it's going to, I'm going to tell you about Apollo tires because you know that's important to tell. Yeah, and then I will tell you the what is the function looks like within Apollo tires. Okay, so those two things uh, will lay the context about then what I'm going to talk about as internal audit in Apollo tires. Okay, and uh, so yeah, and 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 whole approach is suited for Apollo Apollo tires. And that's that's my key message. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll start by telling you a little bit about Apollo Tires. So we oh. are an Indian company which has gone global. We are uh, we, we are an Indian company. As I said, we are listed on, on Bombay Stock Exchange and, and National Stock Exchange. We are headquartered out of Gurgaon. And this is where we, uh, we started. And India is, of course, the major market for us. Um, we, we have two brands. Uh, Apollo Tires and Fredestein. Fredestein was an acquired brand. Uh, it is a European brand, which I've also gotten into India now. Uh, European business is headquartered out of Amsterdam and Indian business is head headquartered out of India. We have seven manufacturing facilities, five in India and two in Europe. One in Europe, we have manufacturing facility in Hungary and one in, uh, in, in Netherlands near Amsterdam. We have two R&D centers, one in Chennai, one again in Amsterdam, looks after different markets because tire may look like a very simple product, round in shape, black in color, but there is a lot of technology which goes inside it, okay? Um, um, we are present in around 20 countries, like we have a physical office, like, you know, like a legal entity in around 20 countries. Um, we sell to more than 100 countries out of those 20 countries. We have 19,000 employees and workers, uh, 2.5 billion in revenue, uh, and we are among the top 15 tire companies in the world. Okay, so that kind of gives uh, the flavor of, of Apollo tires. Um, we are right from US to Australia in between all the major economies we are present. Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, what I would like to tell you about Apollo tires. A uh, little bit about the structure and how it fit into Apollo tires. So we follow a corporate and a regional structure. So we have a corporate function which I have listed here on the left hand side. Okay, let me get a pointer. Uh, yeah. So these are all the corporate functions which will be there in any other organization. Then we have three regions. So we have this region which is Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa headed out of India. And then we have a European business, which is headed out of Amsterdam. And then we have a Euro US business, which is headed from Atlanta. Each one of them is headed by a very senior level person, which is a president level person. And they have the complete PNL responsibility of that region. And each of that region then have their own team. You know, So they have their own corporate functions. As I listed here, they have their own plants. They have their marketing location, warehouses. They have their own subsidiaries, uh, you know, uh, similarly with, with Europe, in Europe, we are present in around 10 to 12 countries, as you can see here, and we have these two plans. And then we have this office in US, which is the next market that we want to, to get into. So currently, Asia Pacific, Middle East, this, this, the business out of India comprise of two third of our, our revenue and Europe is around one third of or 30% of the revenue. And Europe is the next, next um, market that we want to get into. Okay. 
then we have an office in in singapore which we function as a global procurement office because we buy a lot of commodities and and rubber especially which is based out of um, asean countries so we have a global procurement office a lot of tire companies have it's not just us uh, and then we have a global marketing office out of london the internal audit sits right on top so we are one of the corporate functions which i have listed here uh, but we have a direct line reporting to chairman and vice chairman okay formally it is to the chairman but we work with both chairman and vice chairman and and obviously also parallelly to the audit committee having said that we work very very closely with all the presidents uh, and chiefs okay so so it's not that if if i'm reporting only to chairman Uh, i will only take his words but any presidents or any any uh, chief or 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 cfo needing my help i i'm most i work very closely with them and i'm available for their service okay a uh, uh, little bit about of my function we are more than 30 years internal audit in apollo tires is more than 30 years old uh, so i had so i been in the organization now for 10 years this is my 10th Tenth year in Apollo Tires, and prior to this, my predecessor spent around fifteen years in the company. And prior to that, also there was some. So we are a very old function. We have always been in house. We are largely in house. Okay, and that's what suits us. And I'll explain that again. Um, but we do outsource things which we think we cannot do it ourselves. Uh, so anything we think we do not have expertise. So for example, IT audits. treasury audits where we think we need to get an sme to do an audit we do outsource otherwise we think anything that we think we can do it on our own we do it on our own uh we are as i said we are independent of the business so all the regions that you saw we we don't have reporting line to them um we decide our own fate we decide what we want to do when we want to do and good thing about apollo is that there are no questions asked so i if i decide to do something i am given that free hand and that's why i'm here for last minutes okay so this is what we call as the core to our internal audit so what uh, when i joined i came uh, bring brought this concept uh, these are our four pillars of internal audit and and what are these pillars are is that we will do all gamut of the business so we will cover all gamut of business so operations financial it compliance so we are not just financial focus we will cover all of them and all of our audit plan have a balance of all these four pillars okay so that's the core to our to our internal audit and and how does it suits to apollo tires is that apollo tires if you simplify our whole business model uh, we are a manufacturing company like we are a product manufacturing company so what we do is simply we we develop tires we have a r&d center where we develop a new tire we produce it in one of our seven plants we distribute it in in any of our markets and then we sell right and so this is our entire business model and everything else is is supporting this business model right and and the four pillars fit into this business model so operations obviously is is a major chunk financial obviously we are a 2.5 billion dollar company present in 20 countries financial controls takes a president IT we have SAP as our core stuck uh, ERP system, but there are many systems that we use apart from SAP, and then of course compliance is something that we cannot ignore. Uh, if you just look at what is the bifurcation in these four pillars, obviously you can see operations is is taking much of my. This is man hours spent. Okay, based on what what is the man hour that I'm spending on each one of these four pillars. so you will see operations is almost 58% and and when i say operation it is there is a lot of overlap between between operations and financial so when i say sales and distribution or production planning or inventory management procurement obviously there are a lot of financial controls also involved okay uh, but this is this is for us this is core operation this is where the company function you know like uh, you can imagine a, a manufacturing company this is core to us all of this is core so this is where we spend majority of our time then we have all these financial controls uh, financial focus audits uh, cannot ignore this then we have lot of focus on it so as i said sap is our core uh, erp system so we have done all these audits with the either internally or with the help of an 
uh, big four outsourced service provider, and we've done all these kind of audits within IT, and it takes around 10% of our effort. Uh, then compliance, which is approximately around 5% of our effort. So this is how I distribute my whole efforts. And, and this is how my uh, effort supports the four pillar and supports the business model of the company. Okay. Uh, this, this is something that I talked about and this is something which is very which I'm very passionate about. And, and thanks to my company and my management, which supports me in, in, in uh, delivering both to them. Uh, of course, value protection is something that we cannot ignore. It is core to us and it is, it is the base ground with which we start our audit, but value addition is something that we do not ignore. So every audit before we start, we, we are very clear whether this is gonna be a value protection audit or a mix of value protection or a value addition. Okay, so that the auditor and everybody, everybody including me, we are very clear as to what is that we going to get it. Okay. And, and if we are, if we want to uh, focus on value addition, then we, we have a clear insight as to what are the areas of value addition that we want to focus on. Okay, so we do both. We do both value protection and we do value addition and we are very proud of what all value additions that we have done in, in previous years. And I'm gonna talk about few of them. Okay, so this is, this is something that uh, I'm sure all CAE talks about. Uh, this is core to us. So we have an annual audit plan and, and we have a risk-based methodology and we have an internal audit plan. Okay, so I'm gonna talk very little about it just to show a glimpse. And I'm sure this is very standard. I'm sure all good audit functions would have it. So I'm not gonna to elaborate too much about it. So this is our annual audit process. Um, uh, this is how we do. We have an audit universe, which is divided into different geographies, uh, map to locations. We do risk rating of each of the areas in, in, in audit rating, uh, in audit universe. And then we map, Coverage. So minimum of three years coverage is my map, but we have a history of 10 years. And then we see what we have done, what we have not done. We see what, uh, what kind of audit observations we've observed in the last two, three years and where we need to focus on, on this. So then we come up, based on this, we come up with our plan. So we, this is what we come up with our initial base plan. And then we take it to the management and understand what are your priorities and where do you want us to focus? And then we marry the both. So this is, there is an independent view which we bring in, and then there is a management view that we bring in. We also involve uh, you know, external auditors and our outsourced consultant, and then take all of that and, and prepare an audit plan uh, for, for the year. Um, uh, we, we've been doing approximately, prior to pandemic, we were doing around 40 audits in a year, okay? Um, uh, during pandemic, that has come down to around 30 because with the remote working, uh, the time taken to do an audit was increased. So we came down to around 30. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and each of these audits has been part of that audit plan. Uh, what also changed during the pandemic is that audit plan was changed more frequently. So we, we prepared an audit plan. So our audit planning was not exactly an annual audit plan. We always went into an year that this will be an audit plan for the whole year, but last two years, every quarter we were changing an audit plan, okay? And audit committee was quite supporting. We were going back to them and explaining uh, what changes have been done, okay? So this is my annual audit planning. This is what my methodology looks like. So again, I'll not go into too much of detail, but I'll, I'll tell you that these are the uh, four steps in which the whole methodology is divided. Planning, execution, reporting, follow-up, and audit closure. And with the color coding, you can understand the entire process. There is a lot of emphasis on data analytics in execution. Uh, there is also a lot of focus on reporting, and I'll elaborate about it. And rest is very standard. We, this is the base of a, my methodology, and I have a 20-page internal audit manual, not more than 20 page. Very easy to read, very easy to follow. Okay, so I, whenever I... I have a new hire, that person can go through the entire audit manual within two hours. Okay, and that's the whole intent. And the, and the message that I keep giving to my team is that it, this, is not, this is not something that you need to strictly follow. Every audit is different. And every audit needs a different approach. So if you think you need to adopt a different approach, please go ahead and apply, okay? What we have is something what we call as 10 commandments. 
which is part of our methodology that is something which is uh, no compromise so those 10 commandments needs to get followed rest you adopt your approach what suits better for that audience okay and that's what we we do that's why we i have a 20 page uh, uh, audit manual which is very open okay uh, otherwise anything more than that nobody will read including me okay uh, so that's that's our methodology and now i'll come to the best practices that uh, that i want to share yes okay. and so i along with my team we came out with these five themes okay uh, i'm going to talk about each of these themes for one or two minutes i'll give you some examples some exhibits also to to illustrate how we use them um, so let's start with management focus and this is very core to me uh, so when i say management focus is that every audit that we we do i keep telling my team you should be very clear who's your audience is okay so we get a lot of answers if you ask any fresher chartered accountant he will say my audit my uh, audience is say audit committee or the process owners etc cetera, etc cetera. i said no your audit committee is this person at the cxo level your that is your audience okay so be, let's be very clear about it our customer is management okay audit committee and everybody else if we satisfy the management everybody else would would, would also get satisfied okay that's the key message that i keep giving to all my auditors and if we keep that in mind from the day we start the audit okay keep that there is a president who is in charge of one two billion dollar business if you keep that in mind uh, what he is looking for from your audit right from day one if you keep that in mind all your steps would would follow okay um, so that's that's really very very key for us um, ultimately what we do is that like like we sell a tire or i'm wearing a white shirt and and you are also wearing a white shirt when one when we go to to a market to buy a shirt what we look at is that it needs to be crisp clean well suited etc right i say that if i say to my auditors follow the same approach your audit report needs to look like that needs to look like a product that you're going to to buy from a shelf sell your product to the management okay that's that's the theme with which we work it has to look it has to warrant the two hours that you're going to spend with the management telling you about uh, telling them about the report it has to it has to be worth their time make that they need to come out of that audit meeting feeling that wow i i got certain in, insights that i was i was not aware of okay so with that theme you should go in and and therefore there's lot of focus there is lot of lot of focus on how we prepare our audit reports another thing that i keep telling to my audit team is that any slide that you are presenting make sure that you can talk about that slide in less than 30 seconds nobody will have attention of more than 30 seconds if you are able to give your message in in a 30 seconds then you have done a job okay so so prepare your reports accordingly um you know so all all of our reports have lot of data so all, and and data is presented in a manner that it is easy to read understand etc and i'm i'm going to now talk about give you some example as to how we do to it uh, to go back to okay so look at this so this is my executive summary of one of the audits you know so we we did this audit when there was a major tap technology adoption in this process okay uh, so there was uh, two different IT systems which were adopted. So we have obviously done this audit in the past, and there were a lot of audit observation, and we adopted a new technology in this process, which is outbound logistic. So what is the key message that we want to give after adoption of of uh, this technology? Is that whether the technology is working or not? Okay. So we implemented this Oracle Transportation Management System. Key message is the 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 uh, the weaknesses that we had uh, identified prior to adoption of this have that been addressed or not okay so this is one slide that we start with in an audit and it gives a you know gives like, gives like a overall picture as to what what we have achieved from implementation of that technology okay, so this is one of the way of presenting there are others so this is like uh, we did an audit of of warranty and you will see all my audit reports there are a lot of data which is presented like this so we 
we pay a lot of attention to visualization um, and 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 again how we present that report how we present the data okay now you will you will wonder why is this looks like an mis report okay but this is not because there is an mis report obviously there is an mis report on warranting but this gives certain trends which are not contained in that in in that MIS report. And maybe, you know, people at, at a CXO level, they are not aware of what I'm trying to highlight. Okay, so this is another example. This is again, one of the examples that I picked up from my audit report as to how I'm presenting and giving an overall view on, on, the, on the audit uh, finding. So this is a central procurement process where we are saying you don't have a clearly defined policies and procedure and SAP and what all problems you are having because you do not have a standard standard operating procedures and policies and procedures. Okay, so again, a very, very crisp uh, way of presentation. As I said, my auditor should be able to speak this whole slide in 30 seconds. That's the key, okay? So everything is presented in or prepared in that way. Uh, this is another presentation. There is another example where we're showing these are your inputs. Uh, this is the process that you follow and, and this is the output. And then I'm highlighting within the process, you have three audit observation, A, B, C, which have, I've mentioned it here. And then we talked about there will be, in the report, there'll be, talk, uh, there'll be slides on A, B, C, detailing each one of them, okay? So it kind of gives an overall view of the process and, and, uh, and what are the problems, and then we go into it. So it's like a, you know, a, from a mountain's view, uh, right to the riding on the road. Uh, so this is one example. This is again, this is part of the executive summary that we present at the end of the audit. So we, once we presented our whole audit report, we presented to give an overall view of the audit. So we don't give an audit rating. We don't give like a one point rating uh, or a rating of say three by five or, or, or three. We give this overall view to see, to tell them at a sub process level, where do you stand? Okay. So, so right from V, uh, to a strong, and we use this color coding to clearly highlight uh, uh, where are the areas of improvement and what is working, what is not working. Um, and we do it at a sub-process level and also at a key control level. So both both we do. Okay. Now, in a way, this is also giving a positive assurance. Okay, which some of us may not agree, but again, if you are management focused, then management is looking for this. Okay, that's the key. Management does not want exception based report anymore they want if you if you if you if there are positive assurance to be given you should you need to be brave enough to give okay and and to give that there's a lot of work involved you yeah, know there's a lot of work involved to be ensured that you are able to present this slide okay and uh, and and again i keep saying it the management only looks up this slide to to um, to my auditor this is the message that i gave it to my auditor they are not bothered about what kind of audit plan that you had, how many days that you spent on an, an audit, what kind of data that you used, what they're bothered about is this. This is what I call as end product. So we are not bothered about where the fabric came for this shirt, right? Where the thread came, where was the stitch, who was the labor employed, you know, who was the uh, transporter uh, carrying this shirt. What we bothered about is whether, whether the shirt is of a good quality or not. That is what management is looking for. They are not bothered about how you did the audit. They are bothered about what is the end result of the audit. So focus on what you want to give it to the management. Okay. Uh, so I'll come back to this. And I'm, I, I think, I think I've think i touched about most of the things that I want to talk about. Again, one more thing that I've done, what we have done in past few years is that we've done functional reviews. So we have these five plants and, and you can see, imagine the spread of the company we are into ge different geog geographies. We have done reviews which cut across seven plants, okay, for example, or do a credit review of, of all the countries in Europe, okay. So management is able to get, again, a functional view of what is or what is required to be done as a company as a whole or as a region as a whole, okay. To take, again, takes a lot of effort. It takes three, four months to do an audit, but the end result is really amazing, okay, for, again, for the management and, and for us. Um, so I'll move on to the next one, which I want to talk about. I think all internal auditors are very passionate about data analytics and technology. Um, so I, the way I look at it is that the data analytics and technology is, is part of the way we want to do an audit. So I don't have a different cell. I don't have a 
person who separately looks at data analytics or or IT, each of my auditor is supposed is is a great at doing it, data analytics. So all the all the slides that I've seen, obviously I've chosen the best of what I wanted to show. But all my audit reports contain huge amount of data summarized in a very beautiful way. So you know the the visual there is a huge amount of data churning. Plus a great amount of data visualization, and all this is done by the the auditor, which is like anything between two years to six seven years yeah, experience, mostly chartered accountant. Okay, so take, so for for I don't have a separate data analytics team. Each auditor is a data analytics champion in themselves. He is he or she is also champion in in SAP. So we have complete access to SAP. Uh, and we are fully independent of a variety function when it comes to data. We can go to SAP and download any data from any table. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so all my people, all my auditors have access, and they they download data and analyze data on themselves. We, as a function, have prepared our own training modules for SAP. Uh, so, because auditors needs a different kind of training, you know. So they don't need to do, say, for example, for MM, they don't need to do how, how a PR is created or how a PO is created. They need to see uh, what what are the, you know, what is like, for example, what are the company codes? What are the plant codes? What kind of parameters to be used to generate a report? What are the tables that you need to generate, uh, use? So I've, I've prepared training models accordingly. I have tapering, tapering models for SD, FI, and MM, all three of them. Okay. And and each of the new auditors have to go through it, and it also is kind of a reference material for them whenever they are doing the audit. It's like a it's available to them, and all the T codes etc are mentioned there, and they can uh, go and and have a look at it. Now we are exploring Power BI to do uh, some of our data visualization and and data analytics. Uh, we have an in-house double of uh, audit follow to follow up tool. I think everyone has this. We call it as ACT Audit Compliance Tool. Uh, also, what we've done is that we have a, a digital library of whatever has happened in the last 10 years. So all audit reports, all RCMs, uh, you know, all critical analysis which were done as part of the audit, all are available now on a Teams folder. So we, we've just migrated to Teams. Earlier it was on a shared drive. Now we have migrated to Teams and we are in the process of creating this repository within the Teams folder where my team has completed access to to this database and all my training models my audit manual and all the other resources are available at one place and they it can be accessible from anywhere anytime because it's on on the cloud okay uh people is is very very key to me and is i'm very passionate about about my team and how i develop my team and i I hope one day I am able to move out of, of uh, internal audit and actually becomes a people's manager. Uh, let's see that happens or not. So my, I take great pride in developing my team. Okay. So each of my auditor uh, goes through when he, when he or she joins, uh, that person goes through almost a week of orientation with me and I am involved directly in that orientation. So we have an agenda, some 10 to 12 topics to be covered. Uh, during the first week or 10 days, we spent uh, two to three hours on each of this. So I will talk about methodology and take them through the to, uh, through the methodology. There are SAP training programs that I talked about. Uh, we give them orientation about Apollo tires, how tire is made, uh, you know, what are the key people within the within Apollo tires. So we give entire orientation to them. So first two weeks is no work, is only about orientation. And uh, again, what I keep telling about telling to my team is that they they have end to end responsibility for an audit. Okay, so I and my my number two are we are working in the background, but they are the they are my ambassador all across the organization. So right from doing an audit to presenting at a CXO level or to the president is that auditor's responsibility. So I don't stand up to present any audit observation except for audit committee because that's what I'm supposed to do. But my auditor is has complete responsibility to do the audit, to write the report, to present it to a process owner, to a departmental head, to the plant head, to and right up to the president of the company. Okay, so I am only there to support, and that person has the complete responsibility. Why do I need to do that? Is that I also need to prepare future managers. 
Okay, and this helps them in preparing future managers. And what it also helps is, this is the last point that I've mentioned is that um, it's one of my mandate from management is that uh, you should be able to give future finance managers to the company. Okay, so after three years, four years, if any of uh, any one of my auditors want to move to a to a line function, we we ensure we work with the CFO and and corporate HR function to ensure that that person is able to move to to a line function and this has happened and this has worked beautifully so i'm my resources is always in demand whereas i am always trying to hold them uh up my sleeves okay uh, we do we, we uh knowledge sharing sessions is or uh, keeping uh audit team updated with latest happening is always a challenge in a small team uh, we keep doing uh, knowledge sharing sessions someone has done a very different audit uh, after completion of the audit that person will do a presentation to the entire team Okay. So again, that's that's the whole philosophy is that you take charge, you be responsible from end to end, and and we are there to support. Okay. Uh, so that's on on people side. Uh, then on advisory side, I think we've we've done a lot of advisory projects. One of the thing is that we we did this uh, full implementation of mold management system. So this is one of the equipment which is used in manufacturing of tires, and and we did a seven plant review you know that's the functional review that we did on mold management and we came out with a lot of observations and management said okay why don't you uh, why don't you develop the whole sop and also there was a already an agenda of making a mold management system a separate it system for mold managing molds so why don't you also help in developing lead the whole uh, development process so we made a cross functional team headed by my number 2 he had it. He was the project leader for making that mold management system. Okay, so one and a half year project. We made the whole SOP. We we made the IT system, and we have we have gone right. And there are few other examples where we have done. And we have actively participated in supporting advisory. All coming out of from audit reports. So my audit reports. If if my audit uh, um, outcome of my audit have have become an uh, advisory support to the uh, to the management i'm more than happy to play that role okay i don't shy away from that i don't believe in that three line of defense okay we are we are we are there in all the line of defense okay uh, one more one more thing that we should talk, i want to talk about is that ifc is something that i do very seamlessly okay so again i don't have a separate team or or separate agenda to do ifc Whenever my my team is going to do an audit, IFC is covered as part of it. Okay, so we don't do any separate controls testing as part of IFC. Uh, the process owner doesn't even get to know that we are doing IFC testing. So whenever we go and do an audit, we have identified uh, RCM, we have testing template, and we go ahead and do those audit and 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 come out with an IFC result at the end of the year, which we share it with uh, with our external auditors. And last ever since ifc is in place we've uh, and we worked with two different big four set of auditors and we've never had they've, they've loved our system they rely fully on uh, ifc and and the, the the point that i want to make is that it's complete seamless process nobody gets to know that i am doing ifc but i completed and i'm able to present it at the end of the uh, at the end of the year okay uh, so this is what i wanted to present and and key to this is that the, the whole approach is is adopted for what is suited at Apollo Tires, and this is what is important for every head of audit or every youngster that uh, you know that want to make a career in internal audit is that don't try and copy what others is doing. Okay, so if somebody is doing analytics or somebody is implementing an audit management system, please don't try and copy. Understand what is needed for your organization. Okay. If if your organization mandates that you should get an get an award at IIA, then go ahead with that. Okay. If your management wants you to focus on on value addition, do that. If your management wants you to focus on value protection, do that. Be a service to the management and and do everything else what is suited for 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 your organization. And therefore, I say my entire approach is horses for courses. So what I have done in Apollo tires in last years. Is what is best suited for Apollo. The reason why we have an in-house function. I came from an outsourcing organization, so I worked in PwC for 11 years, where I was telling everyone else that you should outsource. And I came in here, and I have completely in-house. 
okay because this is what i suited and i firmly believe it is that for for a company like apollo tires it's best to have an in house internal audit department because we understand the company no one no one else can do no no outsider can do and and the kind of diversity that we have and complexity that we have in our operations is best that we have an in house audit uh, function okay so this is what i have, i would like to end my uh, my presentation here uh, and only key message two key message that i would like to say to anyone is that be be focused on what you want to give it to the management that should be your priority number one and adopt everything else based on what you want to present to the management okay thank you so much i look forward to more interactions wonderful wonderful uh, praveen very very nice uh, i think it was a lesson on internal auditing that at least i got uh, today so eloquently done you were willing to share so much of data which is you know you actually shared some couple of audit reports which is i mean you which is fantastic uh, one question that i really want to ask you is you made a very beautiful slide maintaining the spread and uh, i mean it was it was it was simply brilliant i just wanted to know and you gave some percentages what about those percentages are over the years has that percentage Has it changed or changed drastically, or has remained more or less the same? Would be an interesting perspective to get from you, sir. Yeah, it has remained within a range, Satish. Not, not that IT will become forty percent, right? Yes. We so it has remained a range. There are in years where IT has gone up to fifteen percent, but on and this is the latest number that I have. So this is what I have presented to it. In the end, we are we are a manufacturing operations company, so we will that operations. Peace will remain two third of my life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful presentation uh, by Indian multinational. So you know you have a uh, transnational multinational chief internal auditor sitting here. Great, great presentation. Lot of lots of learnings for me and Satish, of course. Uh, one question. Uh, there was a slide in management focus. You talked about depicting the findings in from weak to strong. You know. in a indicator fashion so it's a beautiful way of presenting it how do you maintain there are two questions in that sub questions in that one is how do you maintain objectivity do you have some scoring system behind that so that can be demonstrated to management or to process owners when you are presenting it if somebody asks for it uh, or maybe after you do it you know the second year third year or fourth year you do the same thing then how does it progress you know so uh, how how do you maintain because the process owner may come back and say you know you have said weak it is moderate maybe you know so if there is data behind that you know when you are saying number of failures or, or it is just a brainstorming or the feeling or the of the internal audit team based on the you know overall findings so how do how do you make it more objective uh, you know rather than being it completely subjective okay so there is a mix of science and judgment both uh, it cannot be either either one of them so obviously we have an rcm you know which we define Uh, uh, which we go through it, and and the end result of RCM is that it reflects on the audit report. You know, so so all the observation or the exceptions would get reflected there. So so mix of that we are able to use. Uh, so we see each process, how many audit steps that we had, and and how what are the failure and what are what are the exceptions which are coming into the report, and then we use our own judgment. Okay. and we are quite open to listen to the management there have been times that they have not agreed to it and we have heard them and and chain them and there are times where we firmly believed in what we wanted to say and we have stood our ground so both the case happen and and good part of again about uh, apollo tires is that there are no debates on high medium low okay um, you know we 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 have identified something and management says okay we need to improve and and that's the beauty about my organization sure great you said that in your team each auditor is a champion both in sap as well as data analytics now this in i have seen in my own career i found this you know very difficult to really implement it so i'm sure you also had your share of uh, difficulties but uh, what was your secret uh, secret sauce that you have that you can make such a very nice statement that you know everyone is a champion okay so two thing is that see one is that that uh, uh, your people need to be really the 
the entire show has to be managed by your people, right? So they are the people who are acting on the stage and you're like director behind the stage, okay? So you need to pay a lot of focus on them. Uh, so two things that I've done and I've learned from my mistake is that, that the reason why I prepared my own SAP training modules yes. was, was because of this, because we will have attrition, we will have people moving into line functions, right? Uh, so I, new people will come in. So how do we ensure that we, we, we maintain that continuity? So that's, that's number one. Number two is that we have a very good culture within the team, okay? So everybody helps each other, okay? So for me is that when I hire a person and I hire along with my, my uh, number two in HR, after looking at all the you know technical aspects, I, I, I always wonder whether that person will fit into the team or not. He needs to gel with the team. You know, he should not disturb the environment that we have in that team. So my team, all newcomers, the senior people help them. Okay, so so they will help them in SAP, they will help them in in in, in analytics, etc. So that's the key. So I, I give them all the hard stuff and my team gets all the soft stuff. Okay, so we marry, we are able to marry this. It's challenging, but I'm I'm very proud of my team. Very good. Wonderful. Uh, one last question, Praveen. I think uh, before Satish sums up the entire presentation, you know, uh, can you throw more light on the value addition part of it? You know, we do the value protection part of it, but on the value enhancement part of it, and also how do you choose the special projects, you know, which will really add value to the company? For example, the mold management system you talked about, which will really add value to the company. So how, how do you, as a team, you know, uh, decide on which project should be taken up because that will that take a lot of time and effort. So that should really add value to the company. Yeah. That's number one. And for individual projects, how do you focus on value addition? You know, maybe it is mapped to the profit and loss or how do you demonstrate that value has been, you know, added if you are taking up a value enhancement project? Yeah, so so few things that we do is at the, at, at the uh, start of the year when we do annual audit planning, we identify certain audits where we can, we can specifically focus on value attachment. And the functional reviews that we say, you know, the reviews which cut across all the plants. So the way Apollo Tires works is that the plants are very, uh, they, they, um, there is a decentralized way of working. So plants are quite empowered to make their own decisions. So you can imagine uh, if a two and a half billion dollar of revenue is coming from seven plants, each, each of that plant is, you know, 400, 400, 500 crore, 700 crore, because some of them are small, 700, 800 crores of, of turnover is produced by one plant. So each one of them is quite empowered. So we do this functional reviews which cut across all the plants. Okay, So we are able to get value as to what is, there are certain pockets of good good, uh, good practices and there are certain which where these good practices can be employed. So when you do this functional reviews, I've seen my with my experience, we are able to come out with that value. So one thing that I want to do next year is, is do this audit on spares, you know, machinery spares. Again, do across the company, not just look at one plant, look at all the plant and see what value we can come out. So there's a lot of experience which is involved. A lot of things that we have done in the past, we see, okay, what is that we should do it differently next year? Every year, ask this question to yourself. What is that you want to do it differently this year? Okay. And, and some thoughts will come up. And my audit plan comes up from the team. So one thing is that Apart from me having a KRA on, on, on value addition, which is a cost saving efficiency, each of my team member has a KRA on, on, on value enhancement. Okay. So depending on the number of experience that they have, that value keeps coming, going up. So each one of them has that KRA. So there is a urge, there is a, you know, there is a push uh, from, from, for, to them to produce something which is beyond, uh, beyond just value protection. Okay. And, and another thing that we do is that they, as I said earlier, is that before the start of the audit, be clear what is your object. If it is a purely value protection audit, just focus on that. And there are audits like that. Okay. But if you if you are if you're doing going to the plant and looking at operation, there are always avenues for for some kind of value enhancement. And be very clear what are the two, three areas that you want to focus and see whether there are there are weaknesses which can be improved. Which can be, which can become a um, um, advisory projects to the, to the. If it's not necessary that I work on those projects, if I give those ideas to the management and they work on it, that is more than enough. You, know, you should be able to implement it. So those are the few things that we do uh, to the management, and 
and uh, it's not necessarily as i said it's not necessary that it should get converted into an advisory project for me i may not be the best person to do it because uh, tire tire manufacturing is a very complex process so uh, if 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 someone else is the best person to take up that advisory project then he should do it it's not necessarily that i should do it yeah. great so so much of learning has come and i have you know given this task of actually summarizing this and i'm really really so happy and so pleased to do it two pages full of matter in fact i had thought normally it fits into one page but today two two full pages of it so i'm going to take 3 minutes dipji not 2 minutes to summarize what a brilliant leader you are ravi because it it really came out when ever you talked about you said my team my team my team not i i and i so this really is i something if, if i was 25 years younger i would have loved to be part of your team uh, pravin and that's i think that's the single most important lesson forget about everything else that you said but this is the thing that you that you know you must be a person who's for the management working for the management and also be a good leader so that's the number one lesson i got you got such a big canvas in front of you to paint you know because seven uh, manufacturing sites uh, two r&d centers outside india operations 19000 employees 2 and 1/2 billion turnover your internal audit function has been there for last 30 years you have succeeded in making it largely in house except for a few areas which you do outside uh, which which you get done from outside you are truly independent you got access to all data all the sap uh codes uh, all the sap tables etc which is which is too good very brilliantly you summed up your operations as develop produce distribute and sell when i was in reliance retail we used to say uh, almost the same thing we used to say plan buy move and sell so it's almost you know i i remember those days when you talked about it but yes business is all about developing producing distributing and selling so very brilliantly done and therefore uh, arising out of that comes the operations finance it and compliance functions which you which you audit i said that in the question uh, question also that the maintaining the spread i was a brilliant slide or the very very brilliant it it was oozing with with information and the experience that went into making that particular slide and i really like the way you distributed your time zones uh, of your you and your entire team of, of, of course in operations finance it and compliance your your uh, proposition about uh, value protection uh, versus value addition was was simply brilliant and the learning that you gave that before you do any audit you focus on whether you want to do a protection or whether you want to do value addition and accordingly do your work schedule uh, in on that line while talking about your internal audit manual you said a very brilliant thing you said that it is easy to read and easy to implement most of the manuals that i've seen and i've been guilty of making some manuals myself they get into all kinds of complexity and try to fine tune it so much that it becomes a bit unwieldy you know and then you you tend to forget how to really implement it so any manual must be something which you can you know carry it in your pocket and refer it it's more not not for saying that we have a manual but the manual usefulness is when it is actually used and uh, this is a brilliant summary of what uh, you said that make it easy to read and make it easy easier to implement in your uh, risk rating you made another beautiful comment and there are so many gems that really came out and uh, you said that there is both science and judgment and i think this is the quality of a good rating you can't just be judgmental you just can't always be scientific you need to balance the two and you have used two very brilliant words science and judgment and whenever i think of any rating i'm i'm straight away going to think about these two words science and uh, judgment that was absolutely uh, brilliant uh, the way you went about showing the ways in which you are presenting your reports you know it, it while it might look a busy slide but if you look at it very very clear carefully i mean there was so much of information that is that is available and you also gave one more theory that whatever you want to say say it in 30 seconds you know in each slide and your teams are getting a opportunity to make presentations to the regional presidents 
and you know you are backing them uh, fully that was coming out very very uh, clearly you know the ease with which you said that you have the data for the last 10 years which can be accessed from anywhere anytime is 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 simply uh, good and i'm sure the team has been largely benefited by uh, these uh, particular practices i had to flip the page because i have gone into the third page now uh, you spoke about people you spoke about advisory roles and this was a brilliance again you know the way you got involved in in designing sometimes in audit forums we have a tendency where we have a, a debate that auditor should only you know you the independence and why should i get into implementation all that blah 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 thrown out of the window you have to be useful to the management you exist because of the business you exist when i say you i mean the internal audit profession exist because of the business and not because we are come from heaven or something like that so that uh, you know your your participation not only you you said your deputy also was there in, i was leading some of the uh, mold uh, you called it yeah mold management, mold management system, system. Yeah. oh it was simply brilliant you also developed sops for it and i under I, I i also come from certain industries where i know the importance of mold you know how important the mold is because the mold the, the precision with which the mold is made will lead you to and in a tire it's it's, it's life threatening i mean it's not just you made a bad tv or a bad uh, chassis or something like that but the tire is the most important part of the car uh, so so the mold i can imagine how important it is and you uh, you know you did design you designed some systems for vendor invoicing budget uh, uh, automation etc and the integrated ifc was another lesson that i thought that you said that the auditees don't even know that you are performing the ifc whereas the traditional way when ifc had come we used to completely involve the management tell them to give hordes and hordes and hordes of data and shove it into those files physical files and now of course on cloud and whatever but the management would obviously know that something is going on on the ifc side so your integrated ifc i think was was brilliant courses for courses you said but you are a lamba lambi godi ka race or whatever they say it in hindi you are a really a long 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 uh, rider and a brilliant one at that uh, focus on management you exist because of the management and please ask and the last one because that's the last part i have written is you ask yourself what i can i do different each person has to just ask ourselves what i can do differently you are amazing uh, praveen moon you are really doing things differently and i enjoyed this summarization in fact maybe more than you making this presentation there was so much of learning today uh, praveen i am very thankful I, i got this opportunity to to attend this session and uh, you know this is also going to be recorded it is being recorded and it will be put up in youtube i am sure the uh, the audit profession will be benefited by this tremendously so dip ji your last word on the subject a uh, wonderful presentation lots of learnings and takeaways uh, i'm stunned you know it's there's so much to do uh, there's so much to do i can just say in one word that the internal audit is functioning because of management so this entire presentation which you know praveen talked about you know management focus consulting what needs to be done you do and each person each internal audit has to think what that person can do differently to add value to management i think that that is what is coming out very clearly and it will really add a lot of value to the organizations thank you very much thanks a lot praveen thank you thank you so much i am really humbled to hear your words i i i i'm i'm trying my best to hide the little bit of teary years that i have but Shatish ji, to hear from you such nice words, it's it's I'm really really humbled. You made my day, and as I said earlier, uh, you know, making this presentation itself was a good reflection exercise for me and my team. I involved my team into this. They gave their own inputs, so it was a good uh, good um, exercise uh, for us also. And I look forward to the recording. I look forward to sharing it with my team, and I'm sure they will enjoy it. with no thank you so much i hope we are able to meet physically sometime even uh, very soon uh, but till that time please take care of yourself thank you so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.